What's up, Core Reporters, and welcome back to my channel. So yesterday, I talked about how I was thinking about creating an anonymous Patreon account so that I could subscribe to Kale's thing and like get the tea for you about like, you know, this episode that she dropped, explaining all the info, the lies surrounding and the mystery surrounding her fifth child, um, Rio. Um, and one of you guys in my channel membership, I think it was Colleen, was like, girl, don't do it. She's just going to be lying. Listen, after listening to the entire episode, and I've got all my notes here, Lord Almighty, can Kale lie her ass off? I am so happy I didn't manage to create this anonymous account and subscribe because she put it out for free. So what you would be paying for is a video version, which no offense, but I don't really care to watch video podcasts. I just like to listen to them as I like get ready for the day. Do you like my hair and makeup and shower and whatnot, you know? So I, I don't need to be paying to, to look at her as she lies to me. I could just listen to it while I, you know, slap some mousse in my hair. So why don't we get into it? Because it's going to be long. The episode was her typical 50 minutes sort of a deal. And um, there's just so much to cover that I don't want to waste any time. So at the very beginning of the episode, Kale says that she left Teen Mom 2 because she was leaning too much into the victim like role that they had created for her. And she really acts like she had nothing to do with the way she's perceived by people. She says that MTV manufactured this kind of image for her. I'm like, did MTV tell you to get in your car and say, good luck with your engagement. He's been cheating on you since you were pregnant. Peace out. Did they tell you to do that? Did they tell you to go shake Kavi's head? Did they tell you to cheat on Jonathan with Joe? Like, I don't understand why she wants to take literally no accountability for the way she acted on the show that led to her rubbing people the wrong way. You know, even as early as 16 and pregnant, when she was running around behind Joe's parents' back, they said, listen, we know you're practically homeless because, you, you know, your parents ain't shit. Come live with us. Oh, she just farted. I have a dog here. And she just farted and we're going to collectively shame her for that. Oh, <laughs> so they said, listen, stay here. Um, just don't date, like live for free, raise your child. And she refused to do it, that she would get into fights with Joe's parents about it and everything. So this started really early. It wasn't like something that MTV crafted for her. You know what I mean? So, um, even like, uh, mind you, her persona off the show, she still comes across as a villain with the things that she does online. For example, outing Chris's pregnancy, outing information about uh, Javi and Lauren. Remember that Instagram live that she did with Javi, like to drag Lauren together and whatnot? Like that was a mess, especially for Javi to go running back to Lauren afterwards. Um, you know, it, like she does a lot of things online as well and in her podcast. So then she talks about how people take pictures of her kids out in public without their permission. And it's something that really bothers them, especially Isaac with Isaac being, you know, the oldest of the children. Um, he's 14 years old. Like he's really bothered by this stuff. And I'm like, um, guys, like, what are you doing? These are kids at the end of the day. Like, yeah, um, their mom chose to go on reality TV and whatnot, but like taking pics of these like random kids is like weird. Um, and then, even like talking to them to me, it's weird. They're just kids, like leave them alone. So I definitely understand her being like uncomfortable with that and the kids being uncomfortable with that as well. Now, um, she also says that the children's privacy is the biggest reason why she left the show, which is a huge lie because in the podcast episode that she released the other day, like when she actually admitted to having a fifth child, she started talking about how when she was pregnant and everything, she got back in contact with MTV. She wanted to have a spinoff show about like the chaos of, uh, you know, these the fifth child by the fourth man. But then MTV told her, you have to shoot for Teen Mom 2 if we're going to give you a spinoff. So I don't understand how someone who's seeking privacy for her children would be shopping around a spinoff and negotiating how this spinoff surrounding her children would play out. It just, it does not compute. You know what I mean? Like the lies are truly off the charts with this woman. Okay. So, um, I just, I just can't, you know, I, I really think that she is full of crap. And the only reason, by the way, why she didn't actually end up doing that show, uh, was because she didn't want to shoot for teen mom too, before getting this spinoff. She felt like her chaos was enough 
for a spinoff show on its own without her having to kind of like, you know, negotiate with MTV, shoot for Teen Mom 2 or anything like that. She wanted like the thing with the kids immediately and she didn't get it. So she's like, well, if I'm not going to get this show with my kids on my own, I'm walking away. So please, privacy experts, does that sound like somebody who wants privacy to you? Because I'm confused here. Um, and not only that, but she has been begging for spinoffs forever. Like I listen to her podcasts every week, each one of them, in order to recap for uh, my channel members. I do exclusive videos for them. Um, so I have heard this girl and I have recapped this girl begging for spinoff shows all the time. She does it at least once a month. OK, so there's just no way that she's she's really like committed to this whole privacy thing. In fact, she had recently mentioned about a couple months ago that um, she wanted to do marriage boot camp with Elijah and then she got like rejected from it or whatever. Um, so anyway, moving on. So she talked about getting pregnant with Rio around the same time that she had left the show. And I remember one of you guys mentioning this in my uh, video comments. Someone was like, you know what? I feel like the reason Kale left the show is because she got pregnant quickly by that neighbor. And she was still kind of at that time seeing or dating Malik. And she just didn't want to answer for it. Like, remember, Kale, her last season was insufferable. She didn't want to film a damn thing if it wasn't wallpaper or some other, like, nonsense. So, you know, obviously, she would not want to be held accountable for potentially cheating on um, Malik at this point. So whatever. Now, I do think that, like, what she's admitting here to, which is, like, leaving the show around the time she got pregnant, she's like, listen, the decision was made long before I got pregnant that I was going to be phasing out and leaving the show. But I ultimately wound up leaving, like actually pulling the plug and not just talking about it and thinking about it around the time I got pregnant. And I'm like, OK, now, you know, these these uh, cheating rumors are getting a little bit more firm, in my opinion. So she says that she's not embarrassed or ashamed that she got pregnant again by another guy. She's like, listen, I already had three baby daddies. People were making fun of me for that. So one new baby daddy, like what difference does it make? And she laughs about it. And I'm like, wow, this woman is truly ill. And I said this in that episode where um, the new photos came out showing that she's pregnant currently again with what is either a sixth or um, seventh child because, you know, the rumors are stating that she is pregnant with twins. I'm like, yeah, this woman truly is not there in the head. And um, it's, it's sad to witness and like just seeing how like blissfully unaware she is that she seriously has like, you know, problems. Um, it just, it almost makes me want to cry for her. I'm really, really sad. And like, you know, it's like, guys, if you have like good mental health and like, you know, you're, you're there, you got to be grateful for it because not everybody is blessed with that because this is just wild. Okay. So Here's another set of lies that Shakale gets into. She says that she wanted to go through with this pregnancy and birth and like, you know, this new life without cameras. And again, direct contradiction from her last podcast episode where she talked about shopping around a spinoff show about this new baby and teen mom two saying, okay, well, if you want to have this new show about your new kid and whatnot, you need to shoot for teen mom two. And she said, no. So again, you want to go through this pregnant and birth without cameras that you're shopping around MTV looking for cameras to come back on you. Like, come on now. Like, it's just so ridiculous. Um, so um, she says that the baby wasn't planned and the situation isn't ideal, but I'm sorry at her age and with the amount of children that she has and the fact that she was constantly asked while well, she was on Team Mom 2 for like 10, 12 years to talk about contraception, birth control and stuff. She's perfectly aware of what birth control is. And if your birth control fails, she knows what plan B is. Um, and the whole, oh, this baby wasn't planned. I'm sorry, but the baby was planned. The baby was planned. She, you got to stop. I think maybe she feels like this is to take the heat up, but it makes you sound even stupider to me in all, in all honesty. Like the idea that you keep on allegedly having all these unplanned babies, yet like you, you, how many have you had right now? Like you know how this works. They're planned. They're planned. Sorry, but I don't believe it. After a certain amount of time, you just got to admit that this stuff is planned. Um, and, you know, of course, the situation isn't ideal. She talked about how, 
Now they have run out of bedrooms in that custom built home that she just moved into what one year ago. Um, you have, I think, Oh, I covered this for my channel members, but just to give you guys an overview, you can go ahead and join the channel membership for more details on this, but she's hiring an au pair to live with them and she doesn't have room for the au pair. So now she's trying to figure out what to do. do does she force some of the kids to share a room or does she get rid of her office? You know, uh, it's just, it truly is a mess. I, I just don't understand the decisions that this woman makes. Again, she's about my age. She's like 31. I'm pushing 30. I'm going to be 30 in six days, y'all. Uh, and I just cannot imagine having a life like this. This to me is just, wow, incredible, to be honest with you. Um, so um, she says that when she got pregnant with uh, Rio, all she could think was how she can't wait to experience this pregnancy and whatnot without cameras and social media. And again, you guys know that that is not true. So like I said, at the very top of this recap, I am so happy that I did not pay money for Kale to look me in my digital eyes and lie to me. Like I am a complete and utter idiot. Like the way I'm amazed that this woman still has supporters because the way she thinks that everyone is stupid, stupid enough to believe these blatant lies that directly contradict things that she was saying as recently as a few days ago on another podcast is to me insulting. I really don't like when people take me for a fool. And that is exactly what she's doing to the people who like support her. Um, it's incredible. It really is. It's just so brazen. Uh, like my jaw is on the floor. It was on the floor as I like listened to every single lie play out. Like you, I want privacy so bad. I'm so happy. There's no cameras, uh, for the first time, like girl, stop. Stop, stop, stop. Guys, go get your chargebacks from your credit cards or whatnot if you paid to listen to this woman lie to you. <laughs> My God. So um, she also claims that she wants to take accountability for outing Chris's pregnancy. But if you pay really close attention, the language that she uses here is just so dismissive and so like manipulative. She's like, I'm taking accountability for outing Chris's. Well, here she didn't even use the word outing. Uh, for herself. She's like, I, for, for revealing Chris's pregnancy, I went online to congratulate him for, you know, his girlfriend having a, an, a pregnancy. I'm like, Kale, be so effing for real. You were not congratulating Chris. You went online to expose Chris and ruin the announcement for him and his girlfriend because you were still bitter that he didn't choose you at the end of the day. Okay. Um, and not only did she announce that they were expecting a baby, she announced the sex of the baby. So she took both things away from them, which is even worse than just, you know, saying that they're having a baby. She went and purposely took both announcements away from them in a very, very kind of like bitter display of like hatred towards him. And again, she dresses it up. She softens it up by saying she was congratulating him, which we all know is a complete and utter lie. And then she says, but I've gotten my karma. He's gone online and exposed me. He's gone online and outed me. But, you know, see, when Chris does the same thing, she uses really like, you know, harsh language. And it's just so much, you know, minimize what you do, maximize what the other person does, right? Very, very manipulative. So um, guys, I keep telling y'all that uh, the therapy that she is doing is a waste of time and money because this woman, I'm sorry, but I don't think she can be saved. I don't think she can be fixed at this point. I don't think she wants to be saved. I don't think she wants to be fixed. Then she brings up somebody uh, who works in healthcare, releasing her medical information from her charts and whatnot. And again, why haven't I seen this? Where was I? Like, I don't know how I never saw the medical info being released, but y'all know I spent half this year on vacation, so I might have missed it. Um, she claims that she didn't tell Isaac to lie for her. Remember when it came out that he made a comment on Instagram like, oh, my mom's not pregnant. If she was, I'd know. And then people are like, whoa, why would he say that when she is very obviously pregnant? Like, did she do that? Did she tell him to do that? Like, you know, a lot of things were circling around that. And um, then she says that he did it to protect her because he knew that they had all decided as a family to keep this pregnancy secret. And I just wonder how like the secretive nature of this like baby and pregnancy and the existence of this baby is it going to affect or has affected their dynamics and their ability to bond with him because it's just, you know, this is the one child that they've had to do this for. And I don't know, it just feels so weird that like they were coaching the kids 
don't tell anybody that I'm pregnant. Don't tell anybody that I've had this baby. Like, so what happens? Cause you know, in school they do all sorts of activities. Like, you know, um, how many brothers and sisters do you have? Like this, that, and the other, like, were the kids lying in school this whole time? Like, it just feels like a lot to put on them. And so if you guys are in the psych world, let me know like, you know, what your observation or what your thoughts are of the effects of something like this. It feels like a huge thing to to, to have your kids kind of hide for you. Um, but maybe it's something that like celebrities and reality people and podcasters have to do. I don't know, but something about it just seems really heavy. Cause I hate when people, you know, I hate secrets y'all. I'm so bad at like keeping secrets cause I don't like them, you know? Um, so maybe I'm just thinking from that perspective, but listen, you guys, let me know what you think about this, especially if you are in the psych world, um, about like one child being kind of like selected to be essentially hidden and unacknowledged. So, um, she said that, you know, they were in talks to go back to team mom and it was for only one episode. And, you know, again, why was she in talks to go back to teen mom if she wanted pregnancy uh, to hide this pregnancy and to experience it without cameras, right? Like talking out of both sides of her mouth. I thought it was to, she, they were telling her she had to do an entire season of the show before she got her spinoff, but it was only one episode. I'm like, girl, if you wanted a spinoff so bad and they told you all you had to do is one episode of Teen Mom 2 to, this is my lip tint, by the way, to like kind of like make you re relevant again in like the TV world before they give you your spinoff. Why were you so mad? Like it makes sense from a PR perspective that they would kind of like refresh the people on you, then like launch your show, right? Um, but anyway, whatever. She says that Rio is the easiest baby that she's ever had and that if all her kids were like him, she would have 10 more, um, though she doesn't uh, specify by how many other baby daddies. So listen, it really sounds like Creed was like, uh, kind of like, uh, hell on wheels by the way she talks about him. Like in a lot of podcasts, she will mention how Creed was like the most difficult baby she ever had. We even learned recently. And again, this was something that we talked, I talked about with my channel members, but Creed has vocal cord damage because as a baby, he would scream and cry pretty much nonstop to the point where he developed like, kind of like ulcers or lumps on his vocal cords and that is why he has such a raspy voice and so um yeah Chris was upset with her that she had gone to see a doctor about it he's like oh his voice is perfect and she's like I just wanted to make sure people were scaring me online they were saying that like you know it could be cancerous or something his little raspy voice it was like a whole thing um then she says that Elijah adjusts very quickly to being a dad and that it's uh, because he used to help raise his niece and everything. So she didn't have to teach him how to use diapers or anything like that. And he's been super duper involved from the very beginning, which is a great upgrade from Chris, who she described as being very uninvolved for the first little while. And for those of you who are wondering whether or not Creed is jealous of the new baby, nope, absolutely not. He actually loves his baby brother and that is awesome. Um, and then she talks about like the baby shower that she had for Creed, uh, for Rio. Sorry. She's like, listen, I, people in my life knew that I had this baby. Okay. You guys, like I actually even had like the biggest baby shower of my life. And, um, it is not, and this is where she shades Joe's mom, Janet. She's like, like, this was a huge thing. Like I had the biggest baby shower I ever had. Like I never had a baby shower like this. Actually, Joe's mom threw me a basement baby shower once. I was like, oh, not the basement baby shower, girl. Always having to throw a little bit of shade. That sounded so mean. Like what is a basement baby shower? Like it's a baby shower that just so happened to be held in her basement. And what's wrong with that? You know what I mean? So then she claims that paparazzi, you know, following her is just ridiculous because she's no longer on TV, but it doesn't work that way. There's so many people who are huge singers in their heyday, but haven't released anything in a while, yet they're still followed by paparazzi. It's once you're part of the public sphere, you're part of the public sphere pretty much for life. And um, not only that, but she's still a public figure via her podcasts and everything. So to me, it makes sense that they would still be following her, especially with something as scandalous as being only 31 years old with four baby daddies. Um, and Kale has also been quite known to call the paparazzi on herself. So like this whole new thing, like, oh, paparazzi follow me. It's like, spare me. I'm sorry, but it's a, it's a bit dramatic for me. Um, she says that she wasn't going to win regardless of how she announced the baby or the pregnancy. She's like, if I announced it with a magazine 
a spread. It's that I am using the baby for attention. If I didn't, I'm a has been. If I announce the baby on TV, I am just popping out babies to stay on TV. If I, you know, and then she says at this point, listen, I don't even need to pop out babies to stay on TV. I can carry that show without the other girls, without the co-stars. I'm like, oh, not the tea mom to girlies catching a stray. What is she talking about? Listen, Kale's real life really can sustain a lot of attention and it has been proven to. But I, if I recall correctly, Kale was not showing the real nitty gritty of her life on Teen Mom 2 for a while. Remember, she had gotten arrested and charged with offensive touching after putting her paws on Chris Lopez. And she didn't want to film about that. She didn't acknowledge that one bit on camera. She instead had us looking at wallpaper. And then she was talking crap about Lauren. Lauren wanted to confront her on camera. She ran away. Like there's so many exciting moments that could be great for TV, but she doesn't show them. So for her to claim that she can carry a show without the other girls is is a bit of a joke to me. You know, I'm sorry, but we're not interested in watching you guys pick out wallpaper. Show your real life or get lost, okay? Now, um, what was the next point? She says that um, Elijah gives her full permission to show the baby online. So all the people who were suggesting that she isn't showing the baby because of Elijah and whatnot, not true. Elijah doesn't tell Kale what to do. Kale says that she tells Elijah what to do. So don't believe the rumors on that. And that when it comes to the cheating rumors, remember, Kale was dating a man named, is this Malik or something, after she was with Chris? And then Elijah, what we didn't know is he was dating a woman after his divorce. And so Kale says that while the two of them were in relationships with these other people, they started taking an interest in one another and had a conversation where they decided that they were going to break up with these other people in order to get together because they did not want to cheat. And to me, the fact that a conversation like that even took place means that there were inappropriate cheating territory conversations happening prior to that, because I don't understand, like, it just, it, you know, like, I don't know. To me, I feel like something happened before. It really does feel that way. Like, how does this happen? Because I've never been in this situation. I'm very like big on like not having any kinds of like ambiguity with people when I'm in a relationship. Like, so like, don't look at me, nothing, you know? So how does this happen that you're in a relationship with someone and your neighbor's in a relationship with someone and you see each other from time to time, but like his house, you know, your house is huge. So like the gap between your house and his house, how are you guys talking to the point where you decide you want to date while you are both in relationships with other people and it's not cheating? Like, is that a thing? It's like, oh, I think you're cute. I want to go on a date with you, but I want to break up with someone first. Like, how does this work? If any of you guys have been in this kind of a situation and you also claim that you didn't cheat, let me know because I really don't know how this works. Again, I'm really like not into like talking to people, you know, other guys or whatever when I'm in a relationship. So I don't know. So, um, uh, and lastly, uh, just a little like kind of note, a lot of people say that she was copying Kylie Jenner's blueprint of like, you know, hiding the pregnancy and this, that, and the other. And she admits as much in the final kind of moments of this episode. One thing about Kayla, she is obsessed with the Kardashians. Jesus, I almost every episode she's mentioning these people so i am not surprised at all so there you go you guys a recap of everything she had to say about the mystery surrounding her fifth child elijah not El i keep calling him elijah because i heard his name was elijah rio but she's claiming that his name is rio so all the mystery surrounding that baby and whatnot and all the lies surrounding her explanations for it have been exposed in this recap so as usual, I want to know what you have to say about everything. So do make sure to leave all of your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below and we'll chat. That's all for now. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye guys.